Of course, Americans called the West empty, unoccupied. They talked about it as this great open land where you could go and start a new life. But this wasn't true at all. The West was filled with Native Americans, right? And from the point of view of the whites, the land needed to be cleared. The tribes had been declared to be both sovereign entities, meaning their own separate countries, but also wards of the state under the protection of the United States of America. And this worked okay, as long as the Native Americans were in one place and the whites were in the other. Uh, but as the Native Americans begin to go out west, I mean, as the whites begin to go out west where the Native Americans are, that whole sense that you could just have these two separate worlds is going to disappear. Uh, in 1851, the policy was concentration. You concentrate all the Native Americans onto some land so you can keep them away from the white people and everything will be okay. Uh, of course, America signs a number of treaties giving Indian tribes uh, land that they could live on. It may not be the land the Native American tribes want, uh, but at least it's their own. We pledge to leave them alone. Of course, we gave the tribes the worst land, or what we thought was the worst land, and if Native American tribes, uh, if their, their real leaders wouldn't sign these treaties to accept this, we would just find any old Native American, declare him to be the chief of that tribe, pay him to sign the contract, these are called treaty chiefs, and then claim that we had a contract with the tribe. Even though it may have been signed by the lowest ranking member of the tribe, we didn't care. The 1867 Indian Peace Commission, uh, their job was to cra craft a new Native American policy. And they recommended that we take the Native Americans and put them in two massive reservations, one in the Dakotas and one in what is basically the state of Oklahoma. We will bribe and trick and lie to the Native Americans to get them to agree to go to this. And then the federal government will pay private companies to run the, uh, uh, the reservations. And the private companies will usually take, we would pay them, you know, so much per Native American. So they would get X number of dollars for every Native American. And they were supposed to be spending most of that money taking care of the Native Americans. But, of course, their financial incentive was to spend as little money as possible providing for the Natives so they could pocket the rest. And this is what they did. And there's lots of terrible incidents where they do things like feed rancid meat to the Native Americans or not give them blankets in winter because they don't want to spend the money because if they don't spend the money, it goes in their pocket. Native American life on the plains, anyway, was based on the buffalo. And so Americans will figure out pretty quickly, if you just kill all the buffalo, you'll destroy the Native American way of life. And so buffalo will be hunted by everyone, professionals, amateurs, even uh, passengers on trains on the transcontinental railroads will just take their rifles out and just shoot the buffalo for fun, for no good reason. Everyone is killing a lot of buffalo. Buffalo Bill Cody, who had his Wild West show I mentioned before, uh, was said to kill 100 buffalo a day or more uh, during his peak. Now, the buffalo were killed originally uh, for their fur, because that could be sold for a lot of money in the East and back in Europe. When they built the Transcontinental Railroad, they would kill the buffalo, take the meat, and feed the, the workers on the Transcontinental Railroad that way. It was basically free food for the companies building the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, but eventually, uh, they're going to kill the buffalo for the specific reason that it will destroy the Native American tribes. Uh, they, if you kill the buffalo, the Native American tribes will disappear. And they were right. Uh, the buffalo herds in America were more than 100 million buffalo at its peak. By 1865, that number's gone from 100 million to 15 million. Ten years later, by 1875, there are fewer than 1,000 buffalo still existing in the world. Um, and we're going to look at this slide here. You should uh, pause this if you're not in my class and definitely read it. But what you're going to find out here is that Texas will pass a law uh, to kill the buffalo. The state will kill the buffalo specifically to get rid of the Native Americans. But you should pause and read this. It's really interesting. The Native American Wars will be constant from the 1850s to the 1880s, um, uh, or the Indian Wars. Uh, it, it, often there are retaliatory attacks from the native against wagon trains, stagecoaches, trains, or ranchers setting up land in Indian territory. As the Native Americans begin to understand that the white people encroaching into their territory will destroy their way of life. Uh, so basically, we move into their territory, they attack to fight back, and then here comes the U.S. Army, and the thing turns into a war. During the Civil War, the Sioux in Minnesota were starved by corrupt government agents on their reservation. Uh, an Indian leader named Little Crow will lead a revolt and kill 700 whites because the Native Americans have no food to eat. The army, the cavalry, will ride out and put down Little Crow's rebellion. 38 will be hanged and exiled uh, to the Dakota Reservation. 
Meanwhile, the Arapaho and the Cheyenne are attacking miners in Colorado. Uh, the, the miners are moving into land that had been given to the Native Americans. The Native Americans are fighting against this land that Jefferson had given them, and the state militias will organize to attack. In 1864, uh, the governor of Colorado will invite the Native Americans to come to a U.S. Army fort, Fort Lyon, and he will guarantee their protection. Uh, a man named John Shivington will organize a militia right out to where the Native Americans have been guaranteed protection along the Sand Creek, and he and his militia will massacre the Native Americans. They do this while the, uh, while the men are away. The men have ridden out to hunt. And so they're going to attack the women and children left at Sand Creek and murder 133 Native Americans, including 105 women and children. Black Kettle himself escapes but will be slaughtered four years later by Custer. Uh, when asked why he did this, uh, 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 Shivington uh, will give the, the chilling response. Or, or, I'm sorry, when asked why he killed the children. Uh, by the way, they didn't want to waste bullets, and so they beat the children's heads open, uh, smashed them open with the butts of their guns so they didn't have to wait bullets. When said, why did you go through such pains to make sure all the children were killed, Shivington will say, nits breed lice. Nits are the little eggs that hatch into lice. The U.S. Army is kept together after the Civil War. Once we win the Civil War, we don't disband the Army. We keep it together and we send it west to use on the Native Americans. Uh, in Montana, the, the great chief Red Cloud will fight against the construction of the Bozeman Trail, a trail for miners that is going through his area. And white vigilantes will be paid by the government to hunt Native Americans. Uh, you, if you were a white man, you could kill a Native American, cut off the front part of their scalp, and turn that in for cash. Uh, the name of this is called a redskin. Uh, so if you uh, wonder why sometimes people get upset about the name of the Washington Redskins, it's not because it refers to Native Americans. It's because it refers to the part of the Native American scalp you cut off to turn into the federal government for money. You also probably thought the Native Americans were the ones that scalped whites. That's wrong. It's whites who scalp Native Americans. Sometimes white uh, Native Americans do it in retaliation. It was common belief among whites of the time that Native Americans were inhuman and must be exterminated. Um, 5,000 Native Americans are killed between 1850 and 1880 uh, by the military. The Native American population, in California alone, excuse me, the Native American population, says 5,000 Native Americans in California alone during that time. The Native, population, Native American population in California in 1850, so right around the time of the gold rush, is 150,000. Twenty years later, it's under 30,000. It's decreased by 120,000 in 20 years. Uh, that is to say, what's that, uh, 6,000 a year? That's a lot of people, man. 